Welcome to Kids Express. Join us as we see kids express their love for Jesus while developing their character. Come on, Kids Express! Welcome to Kids Express. Today we're going to meet a young lady who shares her love for Jesus with words of encouragement. I'm Aunt Francine. And I'm Riley. Can you guess where in the world today's guest comes from? Can you identify what country this is? If you said Canada, Quebec, you would be correct. Let's welcome Isabel. Hi. Hi, Isabel. We're so glad. Now, in Quebec, what language do you mostly speak? French. I thought so. Now, a lot of people still know English, right? Yes. Yes. So you've got to tell us a few words like bonjour or what do you, what do you usually say when you meet somebody? Well, when you meet someone, you usually say, Bonjour, mon nom c'est Isabelle. Uh, comment allez-vous? Mm -hmm. oh. Comment allez-vous? Yep. Yeah. So those are famous words, or salut. Sometimes we'd say salut also. <laughs> but that's wonderful, yeah. yeah. So you grew, did you grow up speaking two languages? Yes. That's really good. I'm learning how to speak, um, I'm learning how to speak Spanish right now. I wish I could speak French though. That's really cool. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about Canada. Well, Canada is mostly, uh, has mostly like woods, plains, farming land, stuff like that. And it mostly have like lakes and little creeks and stuff. And uh, Canada is mostly known to have lots of mooses and deer, mostly, and the beaver also. And we also have the one dollar called the Lumi, <laughs> and we have the two dollar called Tumi, and we have the twenty dollar bill with, with um, Queen Elizabeth, number two, and we also have the five dollar bill right here. That's really cool. You know, I love animals, and so I know that the snowy owl is the official bird and symbol of Quebec. Cool. That is cool. And especially in Quebec, do you have a lot of people making maple syrup? Yes. Um, mostly every year, um, there's lots of sugar shacks around here, and uh, people usually uh, reunite uh, at the sugar shacks and um, they do uh, maple syrup and then they eat it or um, they have fun together and then they eat maple syrup and they add in mostly they add in some popcorn and peanuts because maple syrup is very uh, high on sugar if I could say but natural sugar so so their blood sugar doesn't go too high they uh, put it down a little bit with popcorn and peanuts since they're real salty. I love popcorn and I love maple syrup, so I'd love to try that. That sounds really good. Right. For those of you that don't know what maple syrup is, maple syrup is from the maple tree and they tap into the tree and they pour out the sap from that tree to know what it is. And so that's what we're talking about is maple syrup. And I believe Quebec is known to have 55 million liters, which is like 90% of Canada's uh, maple syrup. And they, they just produce a lot of maple syrup because of the trees that are there. So that's kind of interesting. So I, before I forget, um, I, I know many people make the sugar pie out of maple syrup, in, and that's a famous dessert in Quebec, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Do you make this often? Uh, not often. I think I tried it five times, but we mostly buy it at the store because they're the best, to oh. be honest. It sounds really sweet. Like, I don't, um, maybe for me it would be a small piece because it, it sounds really sweet. I can't wait to try some here either. in a little bit, but <laughs> that sounds exciting. So tell us a little bit about how you're sharing Jesus to be a light for your community. Well, um, in my community, um, when people come to our church, uh, like guests, I make some cards to welcome them, and I also tell them that Jesus loves them and that they're always welcome to come to our church whenever they want. And I also text my Uncle Mitchell, who lives in Australia, who is not a Christian, uh, Bible verses, uh, Christian songs, and I also uh, send him some um, messages of how Jesus loves him and how 
I love him too. And there's also, he, was, he always, when I send him messages, he's always really touched. And so I really like that because I know that God put me on this earth for a purpose. And I like using my um, gifts that God gave me to um, help people, to um, teach them about Jesus and to really show them that he loves them. Wow. That's very beautiful. Very nice. So I want to go back about making cards. I think we have some pictures. How many do you do in a week? Every month I make about three cards because okay. we don't get a lot of guests, but we still get some guests like every month. I, I know you've, it looks like you pay a lot of attention to detail and everything that you do with your cards. Yes. <laughs> so do you write scriptures in them or do you, what, what do they look like? I usually put um, really nice like nature stuff. So let's say I put, I go in the woods, I um, gather some stuff like leaves, beautiful flowers, and I dry them up in books. I put them between their pages and I dry them out. And when they're ready, I stick them on the cards and I write beautiful Bible verses under stuff that will really uplift people and that will bring joy to their hearts. Aww. That's really cool. That is really cool. So if there was one thing that you felt like you wanted to show, grow in, let's say um, one character development idea that you feel like God's impressing on your heart, what would that be? Well, um, I always had the, this impression that God always wanted me to be joyful and to always um, have a good attitude when I'm around people and even around my family and to always sing to people, um, teach people about Jesus and to really be a missionary for Him so that more people will be saved when Jesus comes back and that we'll all be uh, one big happy family in heaven. So, so you feel like you want to grow in and realizing the needs of other people. Is that correct? Yes. So I think we call that empathy. Have you ever heard of that word empathy? Yeah. And empathy also means kind of putting your yourself almost in their shoes. Like you're really trying to feel when they hurt, you hurt. When they're happy, you're happy. And that's kind of what we're talking about is it sounds like you want to share more empathy with people. Is that correct? Yes. And is there a particular group of people that you have that burning heart for? Uh, well, I, I, th I always thought that I might start with a small group. So I started with my family members that live all around the world that are Christian and that they know I'm Christian. So they know that uh, I have a God that I actually believe in. And... I always send them messages and stuff like that. So I think they really like it. And um, I always wanted them, all my family to be Christians because I always wanted us to be all in heaven. And yes, I also have a group of uh, friends that are in my church. We go out and witness to people about God too. That's an incredible ministry, and I want you to know that I believe in you, and I know that you can be, you're going to be able to do, do big crowds of people when you're older, or even now. Yeah, and you <laughs> were you were mentioning also, I know before our, uh, before we came here, um, that you had a special heart for like the elderly, specifically. Yes. So talk to us a little bit about that. Is your uncle older as well? Uh, he's not really old. Okay. He's in his late thirties. Um, but I do have, um, uh, my grandparents that live right beside us. Um, I, uh, have my grandmother that lives in Granby that's, which is really close from our house. And I have also another grandmother that lives in, um, St. Georges, which is in French. It's a French, uh, kind of city and also in BC. Okay. Huh? So are there elderly people in your church that you sometimes help out with? Yes, um, I help them out when, uh, let's say they have like a lot of things in their hands. I help them out, put them up the stairs, and I also help them go up the stairs. Um, I also help them sometimes with their cleaning, their house, um, doing their groceries and stuff like that. I know sometimes it's hard for me to clean up by myself, so that must take a lot of discipline to do. So tell yes. us, tell us, how did you find these elderly people to take care of? Like. Were they members of your church or their neighbors? Or how did you, in other words, how did you know that there was a need? 
Well, some of them are for my church. Some of them are family. Mm -hmm. um, and I know their need because sometimes they tell me, oh, could you help me do this? Could you help me do that? And sometimes I just realize that they're tired and they can't do as much as they could before when they were younger. So I mostly help them out and I try to do the best I can to make them comfortable. Let's say they're moving away from their home and going to another home. I try to make them as best comfortable as I can. And I always want to have that level of respect against them because it's really important to respect your elderly. Um, and I, I always put that in my boundaries. I like how you said about respecting our elderly and it, uh, the elderly people in our lives because even the Bible talks about respecting our elders. And even in Romans 12, verse 10 through um, 13, would you help us read that? And in the meantime, what kind of things, as a, uh, we talked about some things that Isabel does, but you know, there's certain things that we can do by asking the elderly people, like, how can I help you, right? Or we, you take time to invest in them and, and find out what their interests are, right? And then, you know what's very important to elderly people? Is sometimes just the physical touch yeah. or a hug. They value mm. that because maybe they've lost a spouse and they, they don't have somebody to just say, hey, I really care about you. Or mm. maybe it, you know, sometimes they forget to even drink some water or forget to eat. And so sometimes some people have even brought food to them or they especially like, I know my neighbor that Amanda adopts as a grandparent, she often takes little gifts over to them and oh. they love that. So, or asking, like you said, asking with Yardwood, those are all important things. But read yes. Romans 12, verse 10 for me. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. You know, we need to put the love of Jesus in front of our own desires. And sometimes that's not always easy because sometimes if you've met some elderly people, sometimes they struggle in, even in their thoughts yeah. and they even get frustrated. Have you ever encountered that? I know one time we were, my church was having a banquet for the elderly people and this one lady called me over and she said, there's somebody under my table. And so I looked and there's nobody there. And so I told her, oh no, I don't think there is. But she kept insisting, insisting. And so I gave her something to drink and I tried to calm her down. And so I tried to be kind and I say, oh no, that's not right, you're not right. Um, and so I just tried to be kind and calm her down. And then she was able to go and talk to, about something else to somebody else. So you were showing some empathy because, you know, sometimes they think differently or sometimes they think a certain way and we have to be extra patient and show that extra empathy with each other. Have you encountered that too? That's Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, and so we need to show that love. And how do we do that is by being like Christ and put on the, question, uh, the armor of Christ. I think it's time for a question. Yes, I do too. It's from Naya, who lives in Georgia. She asks, will God cease to exist? Well, that's a good question. And has God ever had a beginning? No. God has always been there. And so do you think there's an end to Christ? No. No. Isabel, can you read Psalms 145, verse 13 for us? Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Thank you, Isabel, for reading that. And I appreciate you coming here on Kids Express. This is really special. You know, God wants us to show empathy with everyone, especially the elderly. They do deserve our respect. No matter how they live their life, if you come in contact with someone who has lived a long time, just think of ways to spend extra time developing your character to see how valuable these people are. After all, they have a lot of mini stories to tell us. We look forward to seeing you on the next 